Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Corey Longnecker. Um, yeah, so wanted to just provide a quick update on the last video about running um, some plugins in Edge because it's a Chromium-based browser. So at the time I had an issue with um, even being able to log into Patreon. That has since been resolved. However, the issue of being able to connect it to Foundry is still a problem. So I haven't really put a whole lot of time into trying to figure it out because it's just easy enough for me to switch to Chrome and use Chrome. Um, but I just wanted to give everybody an update um, that, that that's been, you know, that's been a somewhat resolved. So it might work. And from one of the comments in the, in the video, um, it might not be a problem for everybody. So while it was a problem for me and it's a problem for some people, not everyone may have that problem. But I wanted to talk about today are... Um, the next, the next couple of videos are going to be a little bit more detailed because the functionality is a little bit more complicated. Um, the, like the setup, the, the usability of some of these modules. Um, so I'm going to try to clump some of them together if they're a little bit smaller or if they're more complicated, maybe run them out on their own. Um, but the first three that I wanted to talk about are ones called one that's built in, it's built into foundry. It's called either B shape or polymorph. It gives you the option to do either. Um, another one that's an add in is called illumination. Uh, it was formerly called dynamic illumination. And then the last one that I wanted to talk about was simple fog. And that gives you a little bit more manual control over fog of war. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get started. So let me log in here and we'll switch it around and we'll see what we get. Uh, let's see. Let's go to this view. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so first off, let's talk about um, the polymorph B shape. So it's kind of cool. You have a couple of options here. Uh, let me just bring it up. Okay, so let's say that you are Siunati here, <clears throat> and you wanted to turn into something else, uh, maybe a giant ape. All you simply have to do is take this giant ape, drag it anywhere into Siunati's, uh character sheet, and you'll see that it gives you this new dialogue box. It's called Transforming Actor. You can keep the biography, keep equipment, keep features, keep mental ability scores, keep physical ability scores, keep proficiency bonus but leaves class items in sheet, keep saving throw proficiencies, keep skill proficiencies, keep spells. It's a whole list of stuff. Um, and those are based on whether you are going to be doing wild shape or polymorph. And it's pretty neat. So like, let's say with wild shape, you're playing a druid, you want to go into a giant ape. Um, you can keep its mental ability scores and maybe you want to keep your biography. I don't know why you'd want to keep your biography. If you wanted the notes reference, um, let's say all you really wanted to do is keep your, your mental ability scores because everything else is going to change. So you do that, you hit wild shape and now you'll see first off, here's the token that is C as a giant ape. And it gives you all of the, um, the details of the the ape stats, except for their, their mental stats, because you kept those, all the hit points, hit dice, armor class, speed, um, all that stuff is in there. All their, um, you know, damage immunities and, and languages and stuff like that. Really cool. Very easy. And then when you're ready to switch back, all you have to do is click right here where it says restore transformation and you are back to, uh, you're back to who you are. Um, for an example, if you wanted to, oops, transform, maybe you wanted to polymorph into an acolyte. Um, let's just do it this way because it'll be easier. You can keep your spells, uh, keep your proficient, oops, keep your proficiency bonus, saving throw proficiencies. Let's just say you're, you know, you're, DM's letting you do a couple of things here. Keep your biography and keep your equipment and your features. And you click polymorph. C is now an acolyte with all of the things that carried over. And when you're ready to go back, simply click restore and you're back to normal. So that is built into Foundry. 
It's very simple. Um, having come from Roll20, it's insanely simple to do this here. And it's so nice to to have it built in and to not have to have some crazy um, custom code with an API for it to work. So that's, that's really cool. So that's that. Uh, the next one I wanted to talk about was Illumination. Um, I think I've got it... Pretty sure I have it installed already. Tried to do that beforehand. Uh, illumination. Yep, illumination's here. So what it does is under the lighting controls, it gives you a couple of extra options. Um, you can switch to dawn. Changes the coloration a little bit inside. You can switch to daylight. You'll see it just got brighter. Just go back. It's a little bit. Uh, more of a sepia tone, and then it's brighter. You can go to dusk, which is a little more gray as compared to the sepia tone of dawn. And then you go to night, and it really throws in some shade on it. Um, and that brings you those options pretty easy. Uh, dawn, daylight, dusk. And it's nice, too, because when you're working your scenes... If I wanted to configure this um, with, well, I can throw these in here when it's working, when I have that um, done. But you can also um, have the darkness level there. Um, yeah, I just totally botched that. That's not, I thought it was part of it, but it's not. So ignore what I just said. Um, yeah. Thought it was part of it, but uh, it doesn't seem to be. Must be remembering something else. But that's that's illumination. Uh, pretty pretty handy thing. And let me grab one more thing because I want to look it up real quick, and then we'll jump to our next one. Okay. So what I did want to look up was actually I was thinking in the right place. Um, I just wasn't doing it. So. It has a provision for darkness level if you're using global illumination. So if you're using global illumination, there's this darkness threshold, um, which you can use to kind of kind of set stuff um, however you want to do it. So that's if you are using global illumination. So that's what that was. Um, but what the other stuff in here is, if you look at the module settings, there's your option to link it to global illumination. There's your illumination threshold. Uh, show lighting options for dawn dusk, which are the two, the options there, and then it allows you to individually set how, what those levels are and what color you want to use. So that's really really nice. So if you want to make it maybe if you're, you know, playing on a different plane or or somewhere else, if you wanted to add a different hue to it, or uh, just something like that, um, you could you could always do it that way. So that's that's the options there. That makes it really really handy. And the last thing we're going to talk about is Simple Fog. So let me, while I'm here, um, pull Simple Fog up so you can see it. And it's built in, so we don't have to worry about it. Let me make sure I have it uh, enabled just in case. Yep, it's there. Um, so Simple Fog. Let's let's rock over here to Simple Fog. So it's this cloud down here. Um, and basically, <clears throat> it allows you to choose a brush size and whether you want to hide or reveal an area. So if you wanted to um, maybe make your brush a little bit bigger. Then you click on the top one there, and then it gives you this paintbrush. And you can say, okay, I'm going to reveal an area. So if you're over here, maybe you just want them to see this to start. Oops. You can kind of fill in whatever you want over here. Or even, you know, maybe they can see everything but this giant ape over here. But you can, you get the idea. You can use this paintbrush. If I want to make the brush size bigger, I can make the brush size bigger to clear a greater swath with it. Um, and then if I go back to their view, you know, it still throws the the stuff in there. Like you can't see behind the the rock, but you still can't necessarily. I mean, she can see it, but that's just because I didn't reset the fog of war earlier. Um, and if I did that now, you'd still see this, 
But if I switch back, she can't see. Well, she can see the giant ape because it's on dark vision and she can see that. But it just gives you that option. So if it's outside of your, your scope or your range, um, you can't see it. So it's some pretty cool stuff. It just gives you a little bit more manual control over um, over stuff. So you could, you know, go back and hide areas. If you wanted to hide everything, you could come back in and hide everything. It's just a nice manual control of Fog of War. So I know a lot of people want to maybe just disguise one little thing and it doesn't quite work the way it's built in. Um, that is one thing that I did like about Roll20 was their Fog of War management system was was pretty good uh, in, in terms of your level of control. And this little module really, really brings back, um, brings that too. And it's on a slider too. So you can kind of like, you know, there's there's some dimness to it. You can you can reveal um, you can reveal more or less than you know than you want. So if there's a little bit of a gray. It's just fun. So take a look at that. That's called Simple Fog. Um, it allows you that manual control over stuff and it's just a handy little tool so those are three i'm going to do those three just in this video um and all of them are available through foundries uh i'll just call it their module store um you can you can look them all up in there and and grab them and put them in so i hope you guys enjoy this video uh next video i'm going to be talking about multi-level tokens and it's kind of complicated but it's really neat it allows you to be able to have tokens um basically on a 2d surface like the vtt is but as if they were in a 3d surface so if you had like a bar with a balcony um you could you could render the view so you got the impression that one person was up higher and other people were down below so that's what multi multi level tokens does. I'm going to dedicate the entire the entire video to it just because it's fairly complicated. Um, another one after that that's also very complicated is called Trigger Happy, um, and that allows you to be able to like jump through scenes, move characters through stuff, um, set traps, all sorts of stuff. So that's going to be up after that. So thanks everybody for stopping by. Um, yeah, hope to see you next time. Take care.